periodic table is a very helpful way that chemists have decided to organize all the elements that we know and that we work with. And it was first put forth by Mendeleev, and this was quite a while ago in the 1860s when there were only 57 known elements at that time. And he knew or just thought that there had to be a way we could organize these elements to get more information out of the elements that we knew existed. There'd be a better way that we could put those elements together that would, that would help us when working with those elements. And he noticed that if you took the elements and listed them in order of increasing atomic number, right, the number of protons, that there was this repeating pattern of properties and that basically that you'd have a soft water reactive uh, metal that was preceded by something that was non-reactive. And he noticed this repeating pattern of reactivity over and over again and thought that maybe we could put this into a table where each column in that table, right, each of the elements in that column would have similar reactivity. So here's the early periodic table that Mendeleev came up with. And as you can see, with only 57 elements, there were quite a few holes in this periodic table. But what was powerful about this periodic table is that he used it to make predictions of elements that we had yet to discover, that were yet unknown. And so, for example, right in this opening here or this opening here, just simply by ordering the elements in increasing atomic number, there were some gaps of elements that were unknown. And in these gaps, he predicted seven or eight different elements that went on to be discovered just based on his understanding of periodicity. And that, that periodicity is this repeating pattern of reactivity. And so by looking at some of the gaps in the periodic table, he would say, well, this element, this gap falls under aluminum. I know the reactivity of aluminum. And because this is a repeating pattern of reactivity and properties, this element that is yet unknown Right, that's yet to be discovered, it's going to have a similar reactivity of aluminum. So here's the full periodic table that we know today. Uh, right? Many, many elements that we, some will use this semester, some we won't. Um, the important organizational things that we need are, uh, right here we've got our groups, right? Our groups are these vertical columns, and these groups are organized based on similar properties. And so here, here are water reactive metals, right? And what came before those water reactive metals were these non-reactive elements, our noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton. Um, the other important aspect of the periodic table are the periods. The periods are these horizontal rows. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we'll come back to those later. So let's take a look at some of that reactivity, some of that periodicity, right? That all of the elements within a group, right? Within a family are gonna demonstrate similar reactivity. And so in these three videos here, uh, an example of lithium reacting with water, sodium reacting with water, and then I'll ask you to guess what's gonna happen when potassium reacts with water. So as we saw, the reactivity of the alkali metals, right, group one, lithium, sodium, potassium, everything in that family, they're water reactive. And as we went down that group, right, the reactivity increased. Another family that you should be familiar with is group two. Those are the alkali earth metals. Uh, next, we get to the transition elements, a, a large group of metals there. Um, other important groups that you should know, group seven are the halogens, group eight, the noble gases. But definitely group one and group two, alkali metals, alkali earth metals, um, group seven and group eight, the halogens and the noble gases are some key groups to know. So the metals in general, what are some properties that we know of metals, right? We've all held a metal in our hand. We all know that metals, right, they tend to be really shiny, right? They have luster. We also know metals are good conductors of heat and electricity.
Metals, metals are also, they're ductile, they're malleable, right? We can take a metal and I can work it into a nice thin wire or stretch it into a nice thin wire. I could roll it out into a really thin sheet of aluminum foil, right? We can easily work with metals. They're ductile and malleable. They have a high density and all the metals but mercury are solids at room temperature. One last thing that gets to the reactivity of metals, metals tend to lose electrons in a reaction. And this is important, we're gonna come back to this. Metals tend to lose electrons in a reaction, right? And where are our metals? Our metals are all the elements in tan. So all of our metals, they tend to have luster, they tend to be ductile, malleable, good conductors of heat and electricity, and they tend to lose an electron in a reaction. That's much different than our non-metals. Our non-metals are in green here. Our non-metals, and just some examples of non-metals, I've got bromine, I've got sulfur, I've got carbon, I've got phosphorus, so I've got gases there, I've got solids there. They tend to be poor conductors of heat and electricity, right? The exact opposite of metals. Poor conductors of heat and electricity. They tend to be brittle, right? That's different than the metal. They tend to, and now this is the counter side of the metals, in a reaction are non-metals in a reaction. Non-metals tend to gain electrons. So this is important. Metals tend to lose, non-metals tend to gain um, an electron in a reaction. And the one group that I haven't talked about yet are the metalloids, and those are in purple, and those are basically, they're, they're not a metal, they're not a non-metal, they basically demonstrate properties of both. They demonstrate properties of both metals and non-metals. Right, many of those tend to be good semiconductors, right? Silicon and germanium are in there as metalloids because they demonstrate properties of both metals and non-metals. So this is why we're going over the periodic table because one of the important things that we talked about was how metals react, how non-metals react. This is gonna help us understand why certain compounds form because we understand the reactivity of those elements. So when I put those two elements together, Right, oh, I've got, a, I've got a metal. Metals lose electrons. I've got a non-metal that's gonna gain electrons. So when I put those two together in a reaction, what do I think is going to happen? Right, so metals on the left side of the periodic table on the left side of the periodic table tend to lose electrons where the number of electrons lost equals the group number. So group one Group one, all of group one is gonna form a plus one ion. My hydrogen, my lithium, my sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, they all are gonna form a plus one ion because they only have one electron to lose. Group two, group two, they're gonna form a plus two cation because they have two electrons to lose. So magnesium, calcium, 
right, all the way down to barium will all form a plus two cation. Our nonmetals, so again, you do not have to memorize this because it's right there in the periodic table of the elements. I'm going to give you the periodic table of the elements on the exam, and if you have to know what an ion is, well, what group is it in? Group one, plus one. Group two, plus two. For the nonmetals, if it's going to form an ion, it's a little bit different. For the nonmetals, they tend to gain electrons in order to um, form an anion. So our nonmetals on the right side of the periodic table tend to gain electrons where the number of electrons gained brings the total number of electrons to a noble gas. So let's see, nitrogen forms a nitride anion, that's group five, right? Noble gases are group eight, so I need to add three electrons, one, two, and three. So adding three electrons would give me nitride N three minus. Oxygen is in group six, so is sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. They're all in group six, so they're two away from a noble gas. So if I add two electrons to oxygen, one, and two, there's my noble gas configuration, so I'd have to have oxygen two minus. The same with sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. For my halogens, halogens are group seven, so that's one group away from the noble gases, which are group eight. So I add one electron to chlorine, right? That makes it a noble gas configuration, becoming chloride and Cl minus one, right? So remember, for each electron we're adding, we're adding a negative charge. Nitrogen, I'm adding three electrons, becomes nitride, N3 minus. At this point, don't worry about the transition metals. The transition metals can take a variety of charges. Some elements take multiple charges. For now, I'm very happy if you know group one, group two, um, and then group five, six, and seven. And then, yeah, so it also doesn't hurt to know aluminum as well in group three. Right, so we should be able to know, and again, you do not have to memorize this. This is in the periodic table of the elements. So if I gave you magnesium, for example, what would you expect the charge on magnesium to be? Magnesium as an ion would lose two electrons, forming magnesium two plus. The nonmetals, the nonmetals, they're going to gain electrons and they're going to gain a number of electrons needed to basically be a noble gas configuration. So the charge on an anion for a nonmetal equals the group number minus eight. So for example, that nitrogen, nitrogen is group five, five minus eight. The charge on nitrogen as an ion should be minus three. How we'd write that as a reaction, right? I've got nitrogen. I have to add in three electrons. It's going to have to gain three electrons to become nitride. Another one we could look at, right? Oxygen. Oxygen is going to be group six. So six minus eight should have a charge of negative two. So oxygen has to gain two electrons, and that would become oxide, O2 minus. And again, for the transition metals, there are multiple charges available. Um, don't worry about that at this point. We will get to that eventually.